Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today we're going to talk about some extreme Photoshop nerdery. All right. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing to talk about. But I scoured the internet looking for an answer to this question and I couldn't find it anywhere. And by scour, I mean I Googled it and it didn't come up on the first page and nor did it come up in YouTube. So I went to the experimentation table. But the thing I was trying to figure out was what is the difference between Adobe Camera Raw as a filter and Adobe Camera Raw the program? Now there is a difference. Someone asked me a question. Why wouldn't I just do everything in Photoshop with Adobe Camera Raw as a filter? Well, you're about to find out why. All right, so just a little brief backstory on what Adobe Camera Raw is. Now, Adobe Camera Raw is basically a pass-through program that is included in Adobe Photoshop. It's not a standalone program. You can't just open up Camera Raw and edit something, okay? With Camera Raw, you have to be double clicking on a raw file from your computer somewhere to go into Adobe Camera Raw, or you go from Bridge and you load from Adobe Camera Raw to then get you into Photoshop, okay? So there really is no way to access Adobe Camera Raw without double clicking on a raw file of some some type, whether that's from a camera or a DNG file. So that's essentially what it is, it's a pass through. Uh, Photoshop can't handle raw data as it stands, so it needs something to edit that raw data and that's where Adobe Camera Raw comes in. Now, if you've been in Photoshop for any decent amount of time, you know that Adobe Camera Raw is a filter in Photoshop CC. It's a very powerful filter. But you also know that you have Adobe Camera Raw, the pass through program. So what's the difference? Well, there is a difference between the two programs. Actually, the program of Adobe Camera Raw itself that you use to edit a raw file, that has some more features in it that you're not gonna see in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Uh, what you'll notice is that in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, you're not gonna have things like your lens corrections. Uh, all those things are gonna be in Adobe Camera Raw, the, the program, not Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So then where does Adobe Camera Raw as a filter come in? Well, that comes in when you're in Photoshop and you need some access to Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, you got it right there in Adobe Photoshop as basically a filtering type of program. It's really powerful. It's really great. I do it all the time. But should you open up a raw file, just bypass Adobe Camera Raw and go into Photoshop and edit with Adobe Camera Raw as a filter? The answer is no. And I'm going to show you why. Okay, uh, so basically what I did here was I took a very bad photograph. Um, there's nothing good about this photograph with maybe the exception of the beautiful waves. However, this photograph tells us two things. One, I've got really dark darks. I've got the rocks there that are really dark. And then I've also got the sun, which is a very bright blowout. Now we need this type of information to run this type of test because we're gonna be pixel peeping and doing some really nerdy things here to, in order to see the difference uh, between Adobe Camera Raw as a filter and Adobe Camera Raw the program. So what I've done here is I've already done the settings on this. What I wanted to do was expand the dynamic range here to open up those shadows so you can see detail in the shadows and close down those highlights so you could see more detail in the highlights. It's essentially an HDR style technique that we use to really open up the dynamic range in the photograph. Now we can see into our dark areas and we can see more of our light areas. The product here is not the best thing in the world. So what I did in this editing process to get from here to here was I did this HDR method here and then in the graduated filters, what you'll see here is I, I added some more color to the, the foreground and darkened down the background a little bit more. Now I did that again because I'm really trying to push the mold of what I can get away with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back over here to my presets and I'm gonna put on the preset that I made for this, which is gonna be this test for ACR. Okay, now I'm gonna press open image. Okay. So what you're looking at here in Photoshop is a raw file that has been edited in Adobe Camera Raw, the program, the pass through program in order for me to edit that raw data and bring it into Photoshop. So I'm going to double click on this thing where it says background here. I'm going to call this uh, original raw from ACR. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is in the folder that I have here, I'm gonna just make a duplicate copy of this raw file. So to show you how to do that, I'm just gonna bring this over here and I'm just gonna press Command or Control C and then Command or Control V. Make a complete duplicate copy of this. Cause now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, double click that copy and open it up into Photoshop. Now, the one thing I really want you to grasp from this tutorial, if you don't grasp anything else, is this right here where, where it says 16 bit. Click on that. If you are operating in the eight bit area, that's bad, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. But let's just make sure that this is set to 16 bits, and we'll press okay on this. 
Now I'm gonna open this image because I don't wanna put that preset on here right now. I wanna put that preset on in Photoshop using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter to see if there's anything different about what Camera Raw as a filter does than what the program does, okay? So I'm just gonna open this image up. Let me grab this original here and put it in the background. I got this open. I'm gonna press Control Shift A or Command Shift A on a Mac or go to Filter and go to Camera Raw Filter. Now, when we're in the Camera Raw Filter, the only thing I wanna do here is go into my presets and then in my preset, I'm gonna get that test for ACR preset that I made. And you're gonna see that some things are grayed out here. The things that are grayed out here are things that are not gonna work in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter because there's something baked into this preset that could only be done in Adobe Camera Raw the program. For example, more than likely, it's a lens correction type of thing that happened there that I might have set there in order for you to see that that would be grayed out. However, the preset will still work. The main thing I want you to draw from this because I didn't do any lens corrections to that anyway, was this image is going to receive all of the stuff that I did with the graduated filters, and it's gonna receive all the stuff that I did with the basic settings, and I'm gonna press okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop this and press and hold shift and drag it and drop it onto my other document here. And I can close this one out. I don't need this open anymore. So on this layer, I'm gonna call this ACR as filter and then 16 bit, okay? So here's what I wanna do also. I'm gonna double click this again to open it up again. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm gonna change this down here to say 8-bit and show you how important it is to make sure that your workflow options here contain 16 bits of data. So I'm gonna press okay on that, open it up in Photoshop, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I just did. Control Shift A or Command Shift A on a Mac to bring this into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. I'm gonna put my preset on there, which is gonna be called test for ACR and press okay. So now I'm gonna take this image, click on it, press and hold shift and drag it and drop it over to here. We're gonna get it, we're stacking up a bunch of stuff on top of each other. And we're gonna pixel peep in a second here so you can see the difference between this. So I'm gonna call this ACR as filter and I'm gonna call it eight bit, okay? So now let's do something here. Let's go ahead and start zooming around here and looking at some things. So I'm gonna turn these off. So now that that's done, let's take a look at the original raw file from Adobe Camera Raw, and then the difference between the 16-bit and 8-bit files here. So I'm gonna do some pixel peeping here. I'm gonna zoom in, and this is the original raw file from Adobe Camera Raw. Now what I want you to see is, this is where we use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter on that 16-bit photo. Now watch this, click on this. What I want you to see here is that the shadows are ultimately darker, they're also noisier, and any area of chromatic aberration around here is a lot worse, okay? So now I'm gonna turn on the 8-bit version and look at the difference there. We can't really see the difference, but let's zoom in really close. The 8-bit version has some horrible noise there. Okay, so now let's take a look at the difference between the 8-bit version and the original Adobe Camera Raw from ACR. Okay, so what's happening here? I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit more and we'll talk about that in a second. This original Adobe Camera Raw, look at the white that we have here on the back there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, grab my brushes here and I'm gonna just take a color picker from right here. That is pure white. It's 255, 255, 255, okay? Now let's turn on that 16-bit one. Look at this. Let's see if that's pure white. So I'm gonna click on my background color and then click that. It's not pure white, it's 238, 232, 234. That's called tone compression. It's probably gonna be even worse when we get into the 8-bit version, especially when we zoom in. Look at the transition here, the 8-bit version versus the 16-bit version. So ultimately, does it matter if when you're in Adobe Camera Raw, you press that 8-bit workflow button versus the 16-bit workflow button? Yes, it matters incredibly at the pixel peeping level for sure. But what we're talking about here is gradation. Now gradation from white as it transitions out into a, a more of a grayish tone, that transition as it goes out is very pixelated in the 8-bit. It doesn't look bad or that noticeable at all in the 16-bit version, even when we're using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. But in this version, we can clearly see that with that original RAW file, we have a nice transition, smooth transi transition from white to yellow where that blowout exists. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's a handoff that happens. So when you go from a raw file from Adobe Camera Raw, the program into Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw can't hand off raw data to Photoshop. So instead it hands off a 16 bit version of that raw file over to Photoshop. So you're making that distinction right there at Adobe Camera Raw. Do you want me to hand over a 16 bit version 
or an 8-bit version of this to Photoshop. So if you don't have that 8-bit button changed to 16-bit, do that now. Okay, now clearly at the pixel peeping level is where you're really going to see this stuff. But even if we go into some of the finer details here, like right here, this is the original RAW file. This is that that 16 bit version that we brought in and then used Adobe Camera Raw as a filter on. And this is the 8 bit version. What you're going to see as we zoom in here is a, a very strong deterioration of pixels as they get smushed together to go from 16 bits down to 18 bits. But your best is going to be processing an Adobe Camera Raw first and then transitioning to Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So then that brings up a couple of other questions, questions that I get all the time as, a, as to Blake, should I be using a TIFF file or a DNG file? Well, if I open up this one right here, this is going to give you a, a, a composite of all of the different ways that you could bring a photo in from Adobe Camera Raw into Photoshop. This first method that we have here, this is the original RAW file. This method right here is basically when you bring a RAW file in from Adobe Camera Raw as a smart object into Photoshop. Is there any deterioration? Well, let's look. There is no deterioration between a RAW file brought in from Adobe Camera Raw, the program, as a smart object to the original RAW file that's brought in. Now, what this means is that at any time, you could double click on the smart object part of this and go back into Adobe Camera Raw, the program, and have access to all of that stuff that's in that XMP sidecar file, which is different than what happens in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Okay, so now DNGs. Is there any difference between converting my RAW file to a DNG and using that when I process my image as opposed to the RAW file from the camera? I think that the difference is really negligible here. If any difference at all, you might see a slight difference in pixelation, but really no strong difference between a DNG file and a RAW file. So then here's our ACR as a filter from 16-bit and 8-bit. Now here is a TIFF file. So basically you bring a RAW file in and you save that out as a 16-bit TIFF. Why would you do that? Well, uh, when I used to do HDR stuff, I used to use Photomatix and I would export my bracketed images out as a 16-bit file and then open that up in Photoshop. So does a 16-bit RAW file have any difference uh, from ACR, the program? And the answer to that is yes, it does have a difference. However, this difference here, this TIFF from ACR as a program is much better than what you would have if you brought a photo into Photoshop from Adobe Camera Raw as a 16-bit and then did your ACR edits. Look at the difference there. This is Adobe Camera Raw as a filter on a 16-bit uh, image that's been handed off from Adobe Camera Raw into Photoshop. This is that 16-bit TIFF. So a 16-bit TIFF is even better uh, on the data processing side than something like Adobe Camera Raw as a filter being used on a RAW file that you bring in. So there is a difference there. That was actually pretty mind blowing for me. Now this one, which is a TIFF from ACR filter. So we open up a TIFF from Adobe Camera Raw, don't do any editing on it, and then do those edits on that image with the Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, and you can see some serious degradation. So that's one of the worst things. The best thing that you can possibly do when you're editing your raw files is use the original Adobe Camera Raw raw file, whether you're using that as a smart object or not, that's your prerogative. I tend to not use smart objects because they add a lot of weight to the PSD file. They make it really heavy because all that data has to be saved into a smart object or a smart filter. And they also can slow down your PC as you're editing. So the biggest takeaways from this, is there a difference between Adobe Camera Raw as a filter and Adobe Camera Raw the program? Absolutely. Adobe Camera Raw, the program, is going to be the most natural, best version that you can get because it's processing exact raw data. Adobe Camera Raw as a filter basically is just working on whatever setup you have, whether that's 16-bit or 8-bit and the data that's available there. So it's basically working off of that 16-bit handoff. And that isn't going to give you as good a results as just working on the raw file directly in Adobe Camera Raw and then maybe using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter later in your workflow. If you do that, Make sure you use it very subtly and use it with things like masking, uh, opacity, blend modes, whatever that might be. I don't think, think there's anything wrong with Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Please don't take that as what I'm saying is never use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. What I'm saying is that don't use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter on a photo that you're trying to edit to get the best of the best out of the raw data. You're going to need Adobe Camera Raw, the program to do that. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this video, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend. This is some really important stuff. So I just recently had a bunch of people come through F64 Elite and everyone has been saying there, man, I thought that everything that you did on your YouTube channel couldn't get any better than that. Well, 
F64 Elite, if you want to take your stuff to the next level, F64 Elite is the place to do that. If you, if you think you learn a lot from me on my free videos on YouTube, I'm telling you, there is a treasure trove of information on F64 Elite. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Stay safe, stay vigilant, and I'll see you in the next one.